Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha and welcome to Stanley Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where we try and keep the community up to speed on all things energy. I'd like to start off today though, and it is energy related, talking about a, a day, special day here in Hawaii that we don't celebrate, but we always commemorate, and that's on December 7th. Um, it's, it's kind of ironic that uh, when you look at the condition that we're in today with fossil fuels and, and being dependent on fossil fuels, we forget the real cost of fossil fuel dependence, and that's, that includes uh, going to war over it. And I think today being December 7th, it's good to remember that um, maybe one of the bigger benefits of, uh, besides just carbon emissions, getting off fossil fuels is uh, keeping stupid wars from happening. So that's just my commentary for, for today. Uh, I'd also like to put out a, a big shout out and thanks to um, Greg Barber and the folks at Naha on the Big Island. We had a great uh, energy storage conference over there the last two days. Um, the the Naha guys were, were, and girls were great hosts. It was uh, well run. Um, the Sheraton over there is a great venue, terrific. I mean, absolutely, probably some of the best presentations I've heard from the National Lab folks and from folks uh, that have been involved in energy here in Hawaii and on the mainland uh, for many, many uh, years. And we had some great discussions on every kind of battery you could think of. And of course, being that uh, my friends and I were there representing hydrogen, we also had to talk about hydrogen as energy storage and that went over really well. So thanks again to the folks on the Big Island for being such great hosts and, uh, and letting us have a, a really good in-depth look at energy storage because it's becoming more and more important as we get more and more renewables on the grid and as we try and really change our entire electrical system into uh, not only absorbing a transportation sector, but just uh, switching to uh, green power and clean power and carbon-free power. So anyway, today, on today's show, we're, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. It, it was touched on in the conference I was just at. Um, we had several folks from the, the PUC. In fact, the new chair of the PUC was there, made a great presentation during our lunch break on the first day, and, uh, and had some great discussions about the government's role in, you know, changing the energy uh, parameters. And of course, Hawaii's on the map for having a uh, a renewable portfolio standard of 100% uh, clean grid by 2045. So our guest today is uh, Ralph Dinola from New Building Industries, and they specialize in consulting uh, and helping uh, stakeholders and decision makers and policy makers on how to make that move. So Ralph, welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Calling in from uh, Oak and Broadway there in Portland. Um, looks pretty nice back there. <laughs> Not exactly a sunny day, but pretty bright. It looks pretty good out there. Pretty bright, pretty cold. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me on the show. Sure. How, cold, how cold is it? Uh, it's probably, I don't know, probably in the low 40s. So. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely yeah. not slipper weather. So yeah. thanks, thanks for being there. Well, can, can you tell us a little bit about, tell the audience a little bit about um, uh, how you got started in doing what you're doing and then maybe a little bit about um, your, your organization? Sure, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I've been working in the building industry, I think, for about 25 years now. Uh, I started out uh, in, uh, I started my undergraduate education in architecture and historic preservation. And so I've got a real interest in existing and historic buildings. Um, and then I, I really started focusing my career on, uh, his, on green building. So, and bringing together preservation and green building. And, and I uh, actually worked uh, as a principal in a consultancy on uh, green building for about 14 years. Um, and uh, from that work, and I, I actually did quite a bit of work in Hawaii, um, but uh, from that work transitioned to this organization, New Buildings Institute. Um, we are uh, here based in, in uh, Portland, Oregon. We're a national nonprofit. And our focus is on advancing zero energy uh, in terms of um, um, uh, zero energy leadership and market development. Uh, we research best practices in building efficiency and we develop design guidance. And we also work uh, to advance energy codes. And, uh, and, and actually the energy code work was really the basis of the founding of this organization more than 20 years ago. 
Uh, and, and so we've been at the, I think, at the heart of a lot of advancing codes uh, nationally in, in the U.S. and actually uh, helped to develop uh, in partnership with a, another consultancy, uh, 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 Fiji's first energy code. So, so we've got some experience in tropical codes and, and, uh, and then national model codes and then working with states and cities on code advancement as well. Okay. Yeah, I first met Ralph um, over here, coincidentally, in Kona again at another um, event called the Build, Buy Green, Build Green Hawaii. And um, he gave us a great presentation, uh, one of the keynote presentations at that event. And so we've got some of his slides here, and we're, we're basically going to run through the slides. And they're focused on Hawaii, so, um, but they're applicable to a lot of different municipalities and, and states. Um, so what I'm going to do is pull up the first slide, and it starts off with uh, something that Hawaii's uh, pretty well set the mark for among states in the U.S., and that is we're the first state with 100% renewable portfolio standard, meaning by 2045 we expect to be completely green on the grid. So, Ralph, I've got your first slide up, so why don't you talk a little sure. bit to that? Sure. I, you know, I, I would just say, I, I, as I did at the, at the conference that uh, I was participating in, uh, and I would say it here, you know, uh, Great leadership from Hawaii in terms of adopting the 100% RPS and, and actually making tremendous progress. And, and I think a lot of this stems from some of the PUC's uh, requirements that, that came down back in 2014, um, but really pushing to advance the adoption of renewable energy, the integration of renewables uh, into the grid and you know, distributed energy infrastructure, and, and working with um, the utility leadership to, to make that happen in a, in a streamlined way. So I'd say, you know, having achieved about 27% penetration of renewables is, is, a, is a tremendous step in the right direction. And we know that some of the counties, uh, some of the islands are uh, upwards of 50% penetration. And I think that what's interesting is starting the presentation with this and then kind of ending the discussion around, you know, the challenge and opportunity of integrating that much renewable. So we'll, we'll talk about that a bit, too. Okay. Um, yeah, so we can go to yeah. the next slide, too. And um, yeah. that's the one that's and, uh, Hawaii power sector emissions on the decline. Yeah, and, and I think that this is, this is good news. And when I originally got this slide, um, the... the um, I think the y-axis was a little, little bit uh, uh, expanded, and, and so it looked like a greater decline. But the, the big takeaway from this graph is um, that you know Hawaii's been very work working very hard to reduce carbon emissions from the power sector, um, but uh, but you haven't really significantly bent the curve yet. And so you know you've made these first steps, um, but in order to achieve the climate goals that we have we have to make much more progress and, and really bend that curve down. So I think this is telling that there's progress, but there's really a lot of work to do, right? And, and, I, and I think we can next slide. This slide ends up in 2015, so do you have any kind of um, trend things towards 2018 that, uh, that you have insight on? I mean, I would, I would assume that these, the emissions are starting to bend down because, I, you know, what's I think what's happening is that, uh, you know, as you start to integrate more renewables, you still have the challenge of, um, you know, needing to generate power when there's, there isn't the, the wind or sun resource. And so that's where some of those emissions are coming from. So I'm assuming as you get more and more renewables penetration and, and maybe adoption of, of uh, energy storage, that, that the emissions will really start to, start to reduce. So. Okay. And the next slide coming up is actually a, a great um, graphic from Hawaii. And uh, yeah, it's it's a, you know, I, a story behind that one. Well, I, I mean, I I just would say that you know I think this is coming full circle for Hawaii. You know, uh, it wasn't that long ago that basically all energy was renewable in Hawaii, and 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 there was self sufficiency um, from a sustainability perspective. So so I think you know that this is kind of an idealized view, but but thinking about the fact that you know. The, the people of Hawaii have been here before, um, and we can work towards that 100% renewable energy economy and, and sustainable economy. So I think that's why I like to use this image. No, and I think you're right. And, and you know, our previous guests have pointed out that even though we have a lot more energy requirements today in terms of electrical power than they did 500 years ago in Hawaii, um, we actually mm -hmm. have the resources, the renewable resources, to provide all that electrical power 
um, organically here in the state. We don't have to be importing uh, fossil fuel to get to the yeah. point and still be sustainable. So I think you're really right. Yeah. And I, I try and uh, encourage all our folks to take a look backwards, just like you did in that graphic and say, hey, you know, we did it before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people in Hawaii are very ingenious uh, about, uh, you know, meeting a goal and, and keeping things um, as close to nature as you can. And I, and I think that we should be looking at that as an example for the future. Yeah, and I, and I would just say that, you know, you are in a fairly ideal situation in terms of, you know, you are remote from those resources, um, but you have abundance of, of natural energy uh, opportunities and also a really very pleasant climate to work with. So, so I think it, the conditions are pretty ideal. Uh, Hawaiians have a very low per capita energy consumption as it is. So, so I think the conditions are right for you to actually be successful at achieving these goals rapidly. Great. Well, we'll throw up the next slide, which is actually one of my favorites because it has surfboards on it. But <laughs> this is kind of your, your lead into the, your plan for Hawaii, or at least your, your um, vision for Hawaii in terms of steps uh, moving forward. And then we can go right to the next slide, too. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so that, you know, five strategies, I think, you know, it's nice to keep things in simple buckets. And, and so I, I, I propose these kind of five approaches. One, certainly advancing energy codes to zero. Um, it's great to see the progress in Hawaii. And you know, you've, you've now adopted the 2015 IECC and, and the counties are adopting that and that's going to go you know, into effect. So advancing energy codes is, again, the single most uh, you know, uh, effective thing we could do. Um, and it's great to uh, advance with the national model codes, but what can you do to move beyond that? So uh, the next slide, slide 11, you know, shows that the magnitude of impact of energy codes outweighs many other strategies that we can do. Um, the following slide is just conceptually, you know, yeah. how we progress. Actually, we, we, got one slide ahead. And, we got one slide ahead of you, Ralph. Can we back up one, Robert? There we go. Sure. Okay, now number, we're moving number 12. Energy. Yeah, we're on the moving energy codes forward, a guide to cities and states. Right, yeah. Okay. So the diagram on the right is just showing kind of the magnitude of impact of, of energy codes, among other strategies. Um, the following slide, you know, is showing kind of diagrammatically how we work to reduce energy use through, um, through codes and basically reducing regulated energy loads, right? So the codes don't regulate all building energy. They regulate just the, those um, energy uses that are under code regulation. So there's a, there's a significant challenge of dealing with unregulated loads, like plug and equipment loads. Um, and we're working to address those too. We're actually working on guidance on plug loads now. But you know, when you reduce the regulated loads dramatically and add renewables, you can then get to zero. So that's, you know, and we know that this is possible. We see evidence of that with, with um, a lot of buildings that we're tracking. So, so that's diagrammatically how to think about it. And you know, Hawaii can do this by adopting voluntary stretch codes and using the existing incentive structure to have people start to use those codes and that actually primes the market for advancing codes. And so that's definitely one of our core strategies is to move codes forward. Um, the next slide, kind of strategy number two is to really focus on getting to zero with buildings and, and at MBI, we've been tracking zero energy buildings since uh, 2012, and we've been producing this status report. You see the 2018 version of the status report uh, every two years. And what we've seen is great progress, a 700% growth rate in zero energy buildings nationally um, you know, over the time we've been tracking it. And so we, we now have about 530 buildings we're tracking we're actually trying to build more into our list. So we actually have a call for projects, trying to um, track down those projects and, and then add them to our registry. Um, so, you know, so again, the trend is, we know this is possible. There is this tremendous growth of zero energy buildings. Um, the next slide shows that the growth rate is actually trending up in private sector buildings, which is a really good sign. And this is kind of, similar to what uh, happened with LEED. You know, there's first, first it was kind of pr uh, public sector adoption, and now, you know, like LEED, we're moving into private sector adoption. And, and so, again, the evidence is strong that we can build zero energy buildings today. And this does, it also ties back to energy code, and I would just say, when you have codes that are not as stringent, 
it is harder to get to zero um, because you have to go beyond code, right, to advance the performance of those buildings. But in this, you know, Hawaiian uh, tropical climate zone, um, there are many strategies that can be deployed. So, um, so we, we think that this is a great strategy for Hawaii. Uh, the next slide shows from our list uh, the projects that we're aware of that are either verified as zero energy or what we call emerging. Uh, the ones that have a goal to get to zero but have not yet gotten to zero. So uh, what we're, uh, and anyone who's listening to this, uh, this uh, show, you know, if you have a project that is pursuing zero energy but it's not on the list, please let us know. And, you know, we have contact information at the end of the show here. Thank so, you. That's, um, that's great to point out, Ralph, because I, I actually added a yeah. few that I hope we see on your, uh, on your list here pretty soon because uh, we've Good. been working on a couple out, out here and, like I say, Hawaii's uh, always trying to be out in front of the uh, the herd and getting things done. Yeah. We're, we're going to take a yeah. quick break here for uh, 60 seconds and uh, bring in sure. some, some of our other show hosts to talk about their shows, and we'll be back with Ralph in about 60 seconds. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Stan Osterman with the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, but we're not talking about transportation. We're not even talking about <laughs> hydrogen today. We're talking about buildings and how to make them more efficient, how to have the building code system uh, accelerate how we get there. And we're talking to Ralph from uh, from um, Portland, and uh, his his organization, the New Building Institute, New Buildings Institute, where they help uh, municipalities and other stakeholders develop good policies and uh, and help codes uh, come up to speed to do things. So we we left off with a slide that showed us some of the buildings here in Hawaii that he's already captured in his system, and he's encouraging folks uh, if you're out there and don't see your building up there, but it's a Leeds Gold or Leeds uh, Platinum or lead silver or or is just you've just done some real good net zero work on your building and efficiency um, in updating a building or you've got new construction going on and you're planning to be um, zero uh, net zero uh, make sure you contact Ralph his contact information is uh, at least the websites on the slide and we'll make sure we get just his contact information to you so back to you Ralph we're back on that slide again so great yeah and I would just just reiterate you know we 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 know that we're capturing a certain number of projects. We, we believe that we're not capturing a whole bunch. So uh, the more, you know, the more we can get contribution from people, adding them to our registry, the better. So again, there's this open call. We're going to be coming out with a new list, and we'd love to have your project recognized. Um, moving on to the next slide, I think, you know, the third strategy is, is this focus on uh, decarbonization of buildings. And, you know, the reality is in Hawaii, there's not a lot of, um, fossil fuel combustion in buildings. Um, there, there is some, uh, you know, pr uh, propane and, and, and natural gas infrastructure. Um, the, but this strategy of decarbonizing buildings is, is a key component of, of what, what needs to happen. So, and, and I think the important piece here, maybe moving to the next slide, is, you know, yes, you're, you're, you know, we're talking about buildings, but we are also talking about transportation, and we're talking about electrification of the transportation system. And, and you know, this is a really important move. I, I think, you know, I recognize that energy prices or energy costs in Hawaii is pretty high. 
Um, but moving the transportation sector to electrification is, is key. I just saw a, a, a news item this week that Volkswagen basically has said their next generation of, of vehicles will be their last generation of internal combustion engines, right? So the auto industry is moving toward electrification. Um, you know, we're working on decarbonizing the grid, and that's your whole RPS approach. And then we're looking to electrify buildings and basically eliminate um, the use of fossil fuels in buildings. And so that's that's kind of this three-pronged strategy that Southern California Edison is, is pushing for, and we see a large trend happening nationally around decarbonization. Yeah, you, make um, a, you make an important point there that, um, yeah. you know, if you have a, a great electric car, a Tesla or a Leaf or, you know, any of the Toyota cars that are plugged in, they're great cars, but if mm -hmm. you're plugging into a fossil fuel grid, you're really an oil burner or a coal burner. So, right. you know, you, we really right. do need to focus on, on as a, a holistic approach the grid and the transportation more as um, a combined asset, not a not separate uh, entities. And again, the transportation sector, only little pieces of it are PUC controlled. Um, and if we really want to make an impact, we have to make an impact on the larger grid structure. That's right. And, and you know, that's where I think buildings are really at the nexus of, of managing all this, right? So energy storage, electric vehicles, um, and the connection to the grid is all happening at the building scale. And so that's how we have to be thinking about this. And then let's move on to the next slide, because I think this is clearly an important piece for Hawaii, which is a focus on existing buildings. You know, and, and so the reality is, is we have a, a replacement rate of, of buildings of about 1% to 2% a year. So that means that 99 98% of the building stock is in place, and, and most of that will be in place for a long time. So a focus on existing buildings is really important um, and having a strategy because energy codes, you know, are are really focused on new construction and we are moving towards more of an outcome based performance approach and, and how you operate um, uh, your building. So once a building goes into operations, um, you know, how do you maintain the, uh, the designed energy performance? Um, but but existing buildings are a real opportunity. So you were asking, Stan, you know, what do we do to move forward now? And, and certainly, um, you know, municipal buildings is a great place to start. Uh, so state and, and city and county buildings uh, are, are an area of focus for us. And we've been looking at assessing, so benchmarking, assessing, and prioritizing these uh, public buildings for deep retrofit and retro commissioning. And, and that's a, a strategy that can happen today. And this is, you know, basically um, leading by example approach, right? Where the the you know the municipal leadership, uh, the state leadership can really demonstrate and walk the talk um, and, and show what they can do with their existing buildings. Um, so that's something we're really pushing for, uh, and and we're doing that in many cities and and with states across the country. So let's uh, let's keep moving. Um, so, uh, you know, this uh, next slide really just shows that um, a majority of the opportunity for energy savings really resides, uh, especially in, in, in uh, residential, um, in existing homes. And so that's, that's where we should be, you know, focusing. Um, the next slide, you know, what we're starting to talk about, and I mentioned this earlier, is, you know, we're not just thinking about energy efficiency in buildings, but we're really thinking about the complementary elements of efficiency and adding renewables and storage and then how you control that. And so that strategy is really a focus on, on how we manage the, the utility grid and the building integration with the utility grid. And often designers, architects, engineers are not necessarily thinking about how their building uses energy and when it uses energy. And this is becoming a more critical component. And this is, you know, with, with the, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50% penetration of renewables in Hawaii, buildings can really serve as a, as a resource to, um, to balance the grid. And so that's what we're thinking about. So the next slide shows the, the um, uh, you know, what it looks like and how the, how the uh, utility grid operates where, you know, there's a peak of energy use in the morning. Uh, and then <clears throat> as renewables come online, there's this uh, belly uh, or, or valley. And then there's this big ramp up in the evening. And this, you know, this is Hawaii's curve. If you look at, at the next slide, um, you know, in California, it's called the duck curve. Um, we, we were calling it the Nene curve, um, but it's, it's this shape which we're trying to deal with, which is this, you know, how do we flatten out the belly and, and, the, and that ramp rate in the evening? 
and try and have a more uniform energy profile. And this is what actually helps to decarbonize the grid as well. So if you go to the next slide, um, this is from the California Energy Commission, and you can see basically um, the, the carbon intensity of the grid and when it's better to use energy and when it's worse you know, uh, from a, a carbon intensity perspective. And, and we see that the, the grid you know, over time in California will become more and more green. So over the years, as they move toward their renewable portfolio standard, uh, and they decarbonize the grid, um, you know, time of use is important and it gets better and better as, as time goes on. The next slide, uh, NBI has launched the Grid Optimal Initiative, and we've been working with stakeholders to advance uh, an initiative around uh, a metric for buildings uh, that measures how grid friendly they are. Uh, this doesn't currently exist, and, and we believe that it's going to be an important next step in um, in, in rating buildings' performance um, and, and showing their capability of responding to the uh, signals from the grid for um, you know when, when to use energy and then when to supply renewables onto the grid. Uh, so this is something that we think would be really beneficial uh, in, in Hawaii. And so what that looks like, if you look at the next slide, is you know we want to try and flatten the load curve and we want to shift the load curve and and try and institute measures that give the building much more flexibility so that it can operate effectively and, and be managed on the grid. So the, the next slide- well, Can you give us some examples, um, some examples yeah. in that, in that um, last slide about you know, how you'd actually do that? Are there kind of PUC policies and things that you're looking sure. for, like a, um, time, of, time of use or, or you know, what drives those, sure. uh, those shifts? Well, so that I mean, those shifts can be driven basically by good design practices, and and you know a lot of I mean the, the simple strategy right now has been demand response, where you know basically a utility can call on a on a building to um, you know to shed load when when it needs to reduce load, and the, and that you know and if they don't, they're going to be paying peak demand charges, and that's a very expensive proposition for building owners. So there's you know this already exists in terms of you know demand response. But we know that there are other measures and strategies. So the next slide, I think, you know, goes through those well, you know, where we, we think about, you know, what we can do is kind of permanent efficiency strategies. So what can you build in, like passive design strategies um, and good, you know, good uh, weatherization, things like that. And then what, what are the strategies for shifting the peak? So that would be things like battery storage, EVs, phase change material. Um, you know, uh, night night flushing or night cooling uh, of buildings, um, and then the dynamic response. You know, those are things where you know equipment can be can be called on. Um, you know, and and the building will respond dynamically. And then dispatchable is is where that building those the, the equipment is actually controlled, um, and and that's you know similar demand response, but but you know having a much more kind of integrated set of strategies. Um, and, and so we're right now modeling this for buildings and we're determining which measures provide how much of the kind of the bandwidth for that building to be flexible and, uh, and reduce loads and shift loads. Great. Well, I tell you what, it, it, we believe it or not, we've lasted through 30 minutes already. <laughs> and I know we yeah. haven't gotten to your last slide yet, but can you give us maybe 30 seconds of uh, how you'd want to wrap all this together? And, and we'll have you back definitely on another show and we'll get into more detail. But. Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe you could go to the slide 30 with the resources, and I would just say, um, you know, New Buildings Institute, we're, we're, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and we're really, our, our goal, our mission is to advance energy efficiency and, and, and really bring about market transformation and, you know, uh, to, toward lo, low energy buildings and, and now more towards the zero emissions building. So, um, so we have a lot of resources, and we are happy to, uh, provide support to uh, governments and to firms that are interested in, in moving these kinds of strategies and policies forward. And, uh, and Stan, thank you again for the opportunity to be on the show and we'd love to come back. Well, thank you, Ralph. And, and we hope that the folks out there that are watching, uh, if they have uh, interest in what you're doing, and I hope they do, this is, uh, it was a really impressive presentation you gave us out here in Hawaii. And we'll have you back on the show later and we'll talk more about this. But for now, we have to say Great. aloha to you, and we're going to sign off until next week. So until next Friday, aloha.